Podcast. Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of InvestorIdeas.com Podcast, looking at cannabis news, stocks to watch, as well as insights from thought leaders and experts. In today's podcast, we look at early announcements from Balance Growworks Corporation, trading on the TSX Venture as VGW and the OTCQX as VGWCF. Canopy Growth Corporation trading on the TSX as weed in the New York Stock Exchange as CGC. Sundial Growers Incorporated trading on the the NASDAQ as SNDL. And 48 North Cannabis Corporation trading on the TSX Venture as NRTH. First looking at Valens Growworks who announced that it's entered into an amended manufacturing and sales license agreement with Source A Technology Corporation which will grant Valens an exclusive license for Canada, Europe, Australia, and Mexico to use the proprietary Source A emulsion technology to produce, market, package, sell, and distribute cannabis-infused products. This agreement shows Valens' commitment to invest and broaden its IP portfolio and enable its customers to bring differentiated new-generation products to market, said Jeff Ballows, president of Valens. As we move into Cannabis 2.0 in Canada, we believe that the products that offer the consistent, high-quality, and predictable user experiences like those we're able to create with Source will capture the lion's share of attention and be the hallmark for brand development in a strict regulatory environment. With this expanded agreement in place, we've extended this opportunity to our existing customers to key international markets and at the same time established a platform for international consumer brands to add high-quality cannabis-infused products to their portfolio. Uh, so the Source A emulsion technology transformed cannabis oil into water-soluble forms for use in beverages, edibles, topicals, and other consumer products without the burden of cannabis taste, color, or smell. And the technology allows these cannabis imbued products to maintain potency when heated, chilled, or frozen, and provides a number of other key advantages as well as including a faster observed onset time compared to other infused beverages and edibles, a significant reduction of offset time, and an ability to use lower doses of cannabinoids due to the enhanced bioavailability provided by the technology. And finally, an increased consistency and stability, with some product formulations achieving more than one year shelf stability with no evidence of separation. We are proud to expand our partnership with Valens and leverage their near-term access to various global markets, said Howard Lee, CEO of Source A. Over the last year, our team has had more than 40-plus professionals, has continued to actively focus on creating and developing innovative, desirable products and formats that consumption for cannabis consumers. As emulsion technology becomes more popular through new delivery methods, such as ingestion, transdermal, topical, and more, it's imperative that the quality and safety in the consumption leads all innovation in the sector. And this is shared value and mandate that our team at Source A and Valens both prioritize. We look forward to continuing this working relationship with Valens and introducing our award-winning emulsion technology to the global markets. Uh, so the agreement grants Valens an exclusive license to use the technology in Canada, Europe, Australia, and Mexico, as I already mentioned, except in respect of medical applications requiring clinical trials uh, during the initial five-year term subject to certain performance milestones. And this increases the addressable market from $37 million in the current Canadian-only agreement to 700 million people in the new agreement, an increase of almost 20 times. Uh, so I actually was talking about uh, this a little bit yesterday with World Class Extractions on how they're entering into the different markets through hemp agreements. Now Valens Grow Works through this Source A agreement has expanded their reach uh, into more international markets, so specifically into the U.S. and Mexican markets as well, and even into Europe. Um, I talked about how basically different extraction companies like Avalans, but not specifically them, uh, we're going to have to start looking at the next phase of which markets they can enter into and how they can enter into that. So it seems that Valens has obviously done that and is doing that through this CIRSA technology uh, agreement. Obviously, the CIRSA Emotion technology is boasting a lot of sort of high impact claims there, uh, similar claims that we've seen from other intellectual properties that have come up in the cannabis industry so far. Not saying that the Circe Emulsion cannot hit all of the claims that they're boasting, but it's more the fact that there's several other companies that all have similar sort of claims to their own proprietary emulsion technology. Uh, the main thing that a lot of people are looking for right now is tasteless, odorless, smellless, as well as um, faster onset and offset time and the ability to use lower doses and higher bioavailability. And again, that's not just alone to the Circe Emulsion. There's several other uh, IP technologies that are out there right now that are all boasting those similar claims. So as far as which ones will actually be able to 
stand by their guarantees and show that they can produce this quality product uh, consistently over sort of scale. That'll be yet to be determined. Um, but so for Valens, this marks a huge sort of chance for them to establish themselves into larger markets and become more of an internationally focused company as again to just focusing on the Canadian market. They have had a lot of success in the Canadian market, but now it has a chance for them to expand into the US, Mexico and Europe. Um, and then for Seriously Technology, it gives them the chance to actually showcase their technology through Valens infrastructure and sort of trade deals that they already have established. Um, but it'll be interesting to see, again, how Seriously holds up versus some of the other IPs that are out there. And also how any of these technologies hold up uh, when they're actually being utilized with a lot of the products. Again, a lot of the products that are coming out now are focused on organic and healthier products. So having water solubility as well as a molecular stable product that can last on shelf life is going to be a huge issue for any company um, and any products coming to shelves is having that consistent shelf life, consistent quality, and also being able to work with water soluble products is going to be sort of the next phase of those products. Looking next at Canopy Growth Corporation who announced the launch of First and Free, a hemp derived CBD product line offered in a variety of formats including soft gels, oil drops, and creams. And these products will be available for purchase on the company's first e-commerce site, firstandfree.com. Uh, so First and Free marks a new way for U.S. consumers to purchase quality CBD products from a trusted source, said Ray Kovacic, president of Canopy Growth. Through state-of-the-art extraction methods, strict quality control measures, and scientific research, we are delivering a best-in-class product to the market. At launch, the First and Free brand will offer the following hemp-derived CBD products, uh, First and Free oil drops, First and Free soft gels, and First and Free creams. Canopy Growth is committed to selling only high-quality, tested, and reliable products and ensuring it makes no claims unless clinically validated. Uh, so this means selling First and Free products only in states where permissible under state law in order to ensure compliance with state consumer protection mandates and following the most stringent state laws regarding the sale of CBD. Uh, so Canopy Growth moving their CBD and hemp derived products into the US market now, again, only through online e-commerce right now, which is what a lot of the CBD products are being sold by, uh, which I talked about again yesterday. So one of the things that makes this a little bit more unique uh, with Canopy Growth entering into the CBD marketplace for sort of online sales in the US is again, they do have this significant advantage when it comes to actually ensuring the source of their CBD and hemp products. Uh, something, again, a lot of the other companies and a lot of the other product SKUs that are available so far in the U.S. aren't able to do, which is actually guarantee the whole seed to sale source of their products. Um, and as well, another thing to notice is looking at the products that they're going to be offering is the milligram doses that they're going to be offering a little bit higher than a lot of the product SKUs we've seen so far. And again, they're going to be focusing on doing this in states where there is already some sort of CBD uh, sales laws in place. So really following their due diligence here, but it'll be interesting to see how their competition works against some of the other U.S. companies. Um, again, as they have established themselves in the Canadian market and they are established as a trusted source for either cannabis or hemp derived products. It'll be interesting to see how that competition plays in the U.S. markets and also if they can get enough of their online retail sales to justify it. As much as there's been a lot of online sales because there's heavy demand for CBD products. Um, not every, because there's so many different online marketplaces, not everyone is actually generating the sales that they're looking for. So it'll be interesting to see if firstandfree.com can actually get the sales team that they need in place and actually generate the revenue that they're looking to have to actually make an impact on the U.S. market. Uh, next, looking at Sundial Growers, who announced the launch of Top Leaf, a new brand of premium, rich, and full-bodied cannabis products created by four cannabis enthusiasts and connoisseurs. Consumers have long awaited access to genetically unique and premium cannabis since legalization. And we're excited to provide the true cannabis lover with the products they've been looking for, said Ryan Heller, Chief Experience Officer at Sundial. Top Leaf is a significant achievement for Sundial as we continue to distinguish ourselves as a global leader in the industry. And this is an essential part of the overall Sundial brand and product portfolio as it offers even the most discerning cannabis consumers products that are cut above the competition. Uh, so... Top Leaf will offer products in four series, the Black Series, Master Series, Legend Series, and Untamed Series. Uh, the Black Series will be strong and unique flavors with a variety of interesting terpene profiles. The Master Series will be unique strains that are rare and notoriously difficult to grow. 
Legend series is a modern take on famous cannabis classics, and the Untamed series will be original, original land race strains cultivated in their natural environment from around the world. Top Leaf products will initially be shipping to Alberta, British Columbia, and Nova Scotia, and then will be later entering into Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, and PEI uh, by the end of the year. Uh, so we've seen a few companies begin to shift their focus this way, Sundell being one of the top people in this space, though, as far as uh, producers, but uh, really focusing on the connoisseur or the high-end area of the cannabis market. Um, this has been an area that's been severely underplayed when we're looking at the recreational market for Canada so far. And the main reason is being uh, people have just been chasing low production cost and lower sales. So obviously with the initial launch of a lot of the recreational brands in Canada, a lot of it was online sales for BC and Ontario. And because of that, and because of the initial high cost of almost all the products, um, what we saw for sales initially was just from the lower sale or lower option price option uh, units that were available. And so now we're starting to see more of a shift of there is sales from sort of all spectrums of price points throughout the industry now. And again, as the next generation of products come in with the Cannabis 2.0, that'll also sort of differentiate where the sales are going to be heading to. But at least a few producers are starting to notice that there's a severe lack of high quality cannabis products available for the recreational market, uh, especially when you're looking for more of the cannabis connoisseur or longtime users. That's why the illicit market has received such a boom from cannabis legalization is that a lot of people just chose to go with the illicit market uh, for lower prices and again for more high quality products as again there wasn't a lot of options available. Uh, so Sundial Growers, again, not the only people doing this, but there is starting to be a trend towards bringing in uh, unique flavors, unique strains. As they mentioned, they're hard to grow strains or modern takes, sort of modern cannabis classics, um, as well as the land race strains cultivated in their natural environment. It'll be interesting to see, again, which of those products use sales faster and where the demand is. But there definitely does seem to be now that the market's maturing a little bit. And again, there's a little bit more access as far as retail outlets in the different provinces, uh, we are going to start to notice that there's going to be more companies focusing not just on the low cost uh, product SKUs, but also on the high quality and top tier product SKUs as well. Lastly, looking at 48 North Cannabis, who announced that third party laboratory testing has confirmed its first outdoor harvest yielded high quality high THC and CBD cannabis. So the company recently announced that's completed its first outdoor harvest at Good Farm and hit its production cost targets placing 48 North among the lowest cost producers of legal cannabis in Canada. This year's harvest positions the company to deliver on its supply agreements with provincial wholesalers in Alberta, Ontario, and Quebec, and extraction supply for Humble Plus Fume. Uh, so today's announcement of cannabinoid testing, of testing reinforces 48 North's strong position heading into 2020. The analysis, which was completed by a &L Canada Laboratories Incorporated, reported that the THC content of the four cannabinoid-rich strains that 48 North successfully harvested ranges from 11 to 19%, with a weighted average of 14%. And the THC content of the cannabinoid-rich biomass produced at Good Farm has more variation in the cannabis levels and ranges from 2 to 15%, with a weighted average of 12%, with 69% of the biomass showing THC levels of 14%. We're very proud to confirm our successfully high delivered high quality cannabis at low per gram cost in our first year of outdoor production. While disappointed that we harvested less cannabis than projected in our first year at Good Farm, today's results are clear evidence of 48 North's industry leadership in the cultivation and production of outdoor grown cannabis. We look forward to incorporating the lessons learned this year at Good Farm and applying them to ensure the 2020 harvest season is a success, said Allison Gordon, CEO of 48 North. Uh, so 48 North have talked about before, but one of the leaders when it comes to outdoor grows right now, that's really been their focus over the last little while. And now as they've shown, uh, they were able to get the results they wanted, not as far as yield, but at least as far as quality. Uh, so hopefully for their next harvest, they'll be able to get that yield as well as quality position. And even though I was talking just before this about how some brands are focusing on the higher price point and higher quality cannabis products. Obviously, there still is a huge land race to get the lowest cost production out there for the Canadian market or for the international markets. And right now, 48 North is working towards that with their outdoor grow program. Uh, so again, for right now, they still haven't been able to achieve the full yield they want, but at least as far as the qualities and THC and CBD levels, 
they have reached that milestone. Uh, so next year, they'll definitely be someone to pay attention to as far as if they can hit their proper yields uh, for the next couple of harvests, and also if they can maintain that quality as well as that low cost production point uh, would put them in again, a little bit of a competitive advantage against some of the other low product cost production growers. That's all for today's podcast. Enjoy the rest of your week. That's all for today's podcast. Podcast is now a certified word trademark on the blockchain through Cognate Incorporated CM certification. InvestorIdeas.com podcasts are also available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and TuneIn. If you'd like to be a guest or sponsor of this podcast, please contact InvestorIdeas.com. Investor Ideas reminds all listeners to read our disclaimers and disclosures on the InvestorIdeas.com website, and this podcast is not an endorsement to buy products or services or securities. Investors are reminded that all investments involve risk and possible loss of investment. Investor Ideas does not condone the use of cannabis except where permissible by law. Our site does not possess, distribute, or sell cannabis products.